All right, we're back out here for another hot day out in the hangar. Uh, today we're gonna be working on section number 28, where we're going to be working on the forward fuselage rib, the uh, BHDS, and the bottom skins. I have no idea what BHDS stands for. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm going to guess BHDS stands for bulkheads, but it looks like the majority of what we're going to be doing this time is marrying up this piece and this piece and this other piece, the other... The other uh, you know, wing, I guess, bulkhead? Is that what that's called? What is that called? Uh, bulkhead assembly. So, yeah. So, eventually, this is going to be all one big piece. We're actually kind of putting all this together, which means I need to come up with a really clever way of putting it somewhere. Hmm. This stuff is about to get really big. And that's going to be fun. <laughs> all right. So in the previous video, I had talked about uh, the different nut plate shape for the K110008 nut plates. This was the picture that I put up last time. You can see that the, you know, one of them is diamond shaped and the other one is round with kind of two wings coming off of it. Uh, in the comments, some of you had said, no, 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 the diamond one was, or well, one of them was actually the 1000, not the 1100. So the 1, 000, K1000 versus the K1100. Except, um, if you look at this picture, you can see that the one right here uh, is actually the 1100. Uh, so or no, the, the, I've got them labeled, I don't remember. But anyways, you can see that, that you know, two of them were labeled one thing and one of them was labeled the other. So I think I just got either a, either a mislabeled bag of something else entirely, uh, or they've changed the shape and design. So I, I don't know, I'm not terribly worried about it. Or maybe they're all mislabeled, heck, I don't know. Um, again, the piece of advice that I have to go back to is look at the image um, when you're looking at the plans, it will show you a picture of a nut plate. And so far, they have been very accurate with regards to shape. There have been times when you're going to use one that's diamond shaped. And there are times when you're going to use one that's not. So uh, follow the plans. And uh, I don't know, maybe they changed the nut plates. Maybe I got mismarked bags. I don't care. I'm using the one that the picture shows to use. I get people all the time asking me if this is something they can do. I mean, seriously, sometimes on a daily basis, at the very least, I get one a week of people reaching out and saying, hey, Jason, is it possible that I could build an airplane? Yes, it absolutely is. If I can do this, you can do this. Trust me, I'm an idiot. And so if, if, if I can make this happen, you absolutely can. And if you want to help support this channel, what you can do when you buy your Vans aircraft kit, and it can be an RV3, an RV10, or one of the newer RV14s, if you use my builder number, which is down in the description below, Vans will send me a hundred bucks just as a way to say thank you. Now, having said that, you can also build something that's not in the Vans product line and just reach out to me and tell me you did it. That'll make me feel good too. Just build something. It's an amazing experience and it's totally worthwhile. Thanks. Okay, quick update. Uh, after doing more research and finding a really long and uh, actually a number of threads on various forums, um, apparently the nut plate thing is just a different manufacturer. So uh, use whichever one you need to use. Uh, there's definitely a difference between the 1100s and the 1000s, but you might get you know, two 1100s that are slightly different. One diamond shaped, one not diamond shaped, same nut plate. Real quick, I have both the inboard and outboard seat supports. Uh, these are made of several different pieces that you'll Clico together that I'm put up, probably putting together in the background or at least during this video. Uh, one thing that you definitely should do on these is rivet the two pieces together before you put the nut plates in. So there's lots of nut plates in here. Um, and it even says to do this, to make sure you rivet the pieces together before you put the nut plates in. You might be tempted to go, oh no, I'll put the nut plates in and then rivet together because you have what much more access to do it that way. Don't. Um, 
Yes, while you do have access, what that then does is it makes it very difficult to rivet some of these rivets in, or at least they, the, the nut plates kind of get in the way. So just a quickie, make sure you actually follow the plans on this one and do it in order it says to. Had somebody ask me about the uh, zip tips and finishing my wings. Uh, I am waiting for the zip tips to show up. Uh, I still have not finished one of my, my fuel tanks. I've just been really kind of focused and excited about doing the fuselage. I need to knock it off and get back to finishing my fuel tank so I can finish my wings. Um, but I've also sort of been waiting for the zip tips to come in. Now, back in May, I, yeah, May, I put in my deposit in order to get the zip tips. And I reached out to the guy yesterday. He's at, at Oshkosh right now. Uh, he said he will be back uh, in office the 30th of this month and he's gonna ship them out to me. They're just, he's just waiting to do that. They're, they're up at the show right now. So looking forward to getting those. As soon as I get those and I get all the wiring done so that they actually work, um, get them mounted on it, I'm gonna bust my butt to get my wings done because uh, at this point I'm just kind of stalling. Let's, be honest I'm just waiting on the tanks um, I do need to do like I said more fuel test leak tests and all that but at some point you just have to go so anyways that's where we are at those zip tips are coming real soon looking forward to that and then we can probably that's when I should get back to working on the fuselage but uh, in the meantime I'm gonna keep working on the fuselage because it's a lot of fun So I had someone reach out to me and ask me if they absolutely needed a bandsaw. Um, actually, it was two questions. It was, do they need a bandsaw and do they need a drill press? Um, I would say yes to the bandsaw, no to the drill press. Now, you can get a, a, a fairly inexpensive Ryobi or, uh, you know, one of those big box store cheap bandsaws that will do the job for 100 bucks do that don't spend a lot of money on a bandsaw i mean i have a giant 16 inch jet you know bandsaw for my woodworking that's a very expensive bandsaw you don't need that you really don't if you have that great make your life that much easier but one of those little bandsaws will work just fine regarding a well let me get back to that <clears throat> there are other ways that you can cut the aluminum you can use hand saws and whatnot but it just some of the aluminum as in the pieces that I was working on yesterday are so heavy and so thick that that you'd be you'd be hating yourself if you tried to do it with like a little small coping saw. Could you do it? Yes. Do you want to do that? No. <laughs> so I would say go ahead and get the bandsaw. Do you need a drill press? I don't think you do. Now I have uh, I have one now. I had two. Uh, one of them burned up. <clears throat> but Oh, no, it didn't burn up the, the th it got out of round. I've never seen a drill press do that. Anyways, it was a cheap Chinese piece of crap. I have a really nice drill press at home as well. It's in my wood shop, but I don't have one out here. <clears throat> I do everything with a drill. You do not need a drill press. Uh, would it make your life easier? Sometimes, but you know, a lot of times when you're drilling, you can't take the big part and put it in the drill press. There's no room. So I think you can get away without a drill press. Uh, but the bandsaw, I would definitely get because it just makes your life easier. Uh, and then, yeah, drilling, I just do everything with a drill. Next, I want to talk about these are the control column mounts. So this is a F100, or sorry, F1033R and L. Um, these are control column mounts that are part of what the section that I'm working on right now. And you have to take this super thick aluminum and you have to kind of cut out this notch. Uh, it's, it's all real easy to do. Um, this is still really hot. Uh, make sure your tools, this, this came out really well. I'm, not, I'm, I'm very happy with how it came out. It's exactly uh, how it, it says it should be. Uh, make sure your tools are sharp. One of the problems I'm having is I've been cutting aluminum now for uh, over a year on that blade and I have not replaced it, so I must replace that blade. Even though uh, cooling is important, so that's the other thing I would say use WD-40 or something to help cool your blade to get a good clean cut. Uh, this did, it, clean, it cut very cleanly, I'm very happy with it, but by the end, 
you know, I feel like I'm melting my way through as opposed to cutting my way through. So uh, before I cut this one, I'll go buy a new blade. Uh, and this stuff is thick, heavy and thick. So just take your time and, and aluminum by its very nature gets really hot. Uh, so like this is still, uh, it's it's now getting to the point where I can actually handle it. But for a little while you saw me, I had, I had to use like paper towels uh, because it was just so bloody hot I couldn't put my hands on it. Um, but I'm going to take this over to the bench, kind of, you know, clamp them together like this, marry them up, draw the pattern that I've cut out on, you know, on this one that's uncut, and then cut it. So uh, not hard, but something you got to do. I, I did find this a little unusual, though. Uh, vans, typically, when they send you parts like this, they're already cut. Uh, there's been a couple times, um, I'm trying to think which part it was, there was something that was something similar like this, where they're like, hey, you're gonna need to cut this, and then you pull out the part and it's already done. So uh, I was a little surprised I had to cut this because a lot of times they're really good about sending you stuff that's already fabricated completely. I mean, this is a fabricated part. Uh, but for whatever reason, it's not. So, okay. Uh, but anyways, came out well. I'm, I'm happy with it. And now I got to go do the other one. But first, need a new blade. So I talked earlier about one way you can help support this channel, and that is when you buy your kit. Put my number. But another way you can do it is if you don't want to buy a whole airplane... <laughs> is to jump over to my Patreon page and for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help support me. Think of it as buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. Thanks. So in the background, I'm building this. It's this giant fuselage sub-assembly and there's lots of bits and parts and pieces. And you're gonna, during the build process, look at it and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, there are clearly places where nut plates are supposed to go, each of these, for example, that there are no nut plates yet. I'm supposed to screw them in, but there's no nut plate yet. Uh, and you may be tempted to rush forward, put a nut plate there right quick and just think that the plans are wrong. No, it's several pages later. Uh, this is a temporary step. At this point, at 28-4, where I'm at now, you assemble this, and then you do lots of final drilling. Now, I did find there were a couple places where it says, hey, put a, you know, put a bolt in here to hold it together, and you hadn't gone through and pre-drilled that up to like a number 12 or whatever. So there are a couple places where you kind of need to run a, a little, uh, you know, run a drill through it just to make the hole ever so slightly bigger to get that bolt through, but only a couple. Um, really, it came together nicely, and now I'm going to go through and do lots of final drilling, and then eventually put this sucker together permanently. Sometimes we have these incredibly nice days here, and other times, rain starts blowing in, and i got to close the hangar. Okay, um, so you this is another area where you're doing a left and right at the same time. Uh, well, you do the left and then it tells you to do the right. Honestly, I, again, I recommend doing them both at the same time. Don't wait. You're going to have to do them immediately, unlike the wings, which could be months and, or a year between each wing. This is something you're going to do very quickly. Uh, but I've got both of these now put together. They're not actually attached to the centerpiece, but this is where they will live. Uh, the next part is putting the skin underneath it with all the associated ribs and whatnot. And uh, then... Uh, final drilling and match, you know, matching and final drilling and clecoing everything together and then rivet, rivet, rivet. Whew, looking good. Um, I got a big piece of, you know, big spar back over here. That That's what goes through right, right through here is the big wing spar goes right through here. Uh, so this, this is kind of interesting. But soon that goes here. Um, we're getting there, man. This is so cool. I am super, super excited. Uh, I'm gonna need help moving stuff soon though. <laughs> you know, aluminum is super light, but once you put everything together, you know, that weight adds up. So anyway, all right, back at it. Okay guys, that's where I'm gonna end this one. Thank y'all so very much for watching and sticking around. If you do me a favor and hit that uh, like button down there and subscribe if you wanna keep getting notifications about when, every time I produce one of these, hit the bell icon. Appreciate y'all so very much. Gonna keep working on it. Gonna try to put out a video every week, like I said. And wow, this is coming together fast. Thanks. So people are amazing and awesome. Um, I was just thinking the other day, I was like, you know, I've got to clear out all this stuff and I've got, you know, I got to make room and I've got all this junk on here. I need to get a cart. 
and I just, you know, thinking about it, I should get a cart. Well, then out of the blue, the fellow that owns the, the next two hangers over, he shows up and he goes, hey, do you need a cart? I mean, he just gave it to me. I mean, people are amazing. What a, what a good person, what an awesome thing to do. Thank you so very much. Um, things come together, I don't know. That, that was just awesome. There's people here are really generous with their time and their effort, and, and I think this is, it's a community thing, so uh, awesome. Thank you all so very much, and of course, thanks to him. This was a very nice gift. It like locks, it's got trays. It's, this was probably a couple hundred bucks.